Good morning, folks. This is Deb. And, you know, we're going to start this out by talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's very public chastising of her Democratic Party colleagues for their public throwing of Joe Biden under the bus. So in addition to that, she further went on to point out that the Democrats need to be focusing on the real things that are a danger to the United States, such as the Supreme Court's immunity ruling and how it paves a pathway for Donald Trump to become a dictator in the United States. Let's talk for a minute. Honestly, no one's asking anyone to unsee the debate. We've all seen it. And perhaps it is sort of like good for democracy for the Democrats to have this discussion moving forward. But you never see any of the Republicans giving their man a public tongue lashing like the Democrats are giving to Joe Biden. And Joe Biden truly isn't the issue because if you've got an issue with Joe Biden's age right now, then you had it a couple of years ago when he announced his run. And it could have been dealt with then. And it can always be dealt with in a diplomatic fashion for a guy who has actually done a pretty darn good job for the people of this nation, given all of the, the obstruction he's had in his way since we managed to lose the house in 2022. We have a man now on the other side of the ticket who nobody is asking to leave the ticket, who is a 34-time convicted felon facing 54 counts more, which he will face, who stole government documents and showed them to people who should never have seen them, left them in the crapper at Mar-a-Lago for anyone to look at. A man who defrauded the state of New York to the tune of $454 million. A man who is an adjudicated rapist who then defamed his victim twice. And now we're finding a man who was all over the court documents involving Jeffrey Epstein. You know whose name isn't there? Joe Biden's. And he gets to stay on the ticket while all the pundits and the newspapers and the rest of the people pulling the hit job on Joe Biden get to point to Joe Biden as the problem. Well, Joe Biden isn't the problem. And as for can he do his job, he's been doing it for about four years now, pretty effectively, I would say. Did we get everything we wanted? Well, no, we didn't. But, you know, perhaps we shouldn't have lost the house either. That might have helped us process along moving forward. Now we face the very real threat of moving so far backwards in time that we will not be able to get out of this. And I suggest to you, we have one totally dysfunctional party who was preventing democracy from even being healthy at this point. We don't need to. And as for the Hollywood elites, you know, the George Clooney's and the Stephen King's and the Ashley Judd's and whoever else is coming out of the woodwork or out from under their rocks. You know what? Let me give me a little, take, little tip about those people. They don't feel the pain that you and I feel, okay? They are millionaires and in some cases, probably billionaires. And as far as I'm concerned, they don't count. Now, the bottom line here is this. Certainly, this is going to go one way or the other, and we're really not sure which way it's going to go yet. Either Biden's on the ticket or Kamala Harris is going to be the top of the ticket. And whatever way that goes, no matter what we feel, and I am a Biden supporter at this point because I feel like he's earned a second term. <clears throat> okay, I'm a Biden supporter. I'm not worried about the fact that he could die into a second term because that's why we have safeguards like a vice president who knows what she's doing. We survived Kennedy, we'll survive that. But it's time for the bash Biden sweepstakes to end here, folks. And it's time for the Democrats to use what they have in front of them to make people understand just where we are in America. That's the case that has to be made. We have a lunatic with a blueprint to install tyranny in America 
paved, whose path has been paved by a corrupt Supreme Court. And if you think we can fix any of that, should we lose this election, you may want to think again, because we will be looking up at democracy and waving as it floats away. And we will be able to achieve nothing. Now, just one final comment about the media before I close out this video. They're very disingenuous assertion that suddenly we have a battleground state named New York because of Joe Biden. I'm sorry, folks. That's kind of that's kind of like a big lie. All right, because if that were the case, if it were Joe Biden's fault, we wouldn't have lost the seat to George Santos, a, a total loser. What happens is we start purity testing our candidates. OK, and and they lose. This is what happens. You lose to the other side. We're doing it again in New York, by the way. Jamal Bowman lost his seat because people in New York have chosen to make Israel and Hamas their number one priority in this election. And you know what that is? Nobody's number one priority in this election. The only thing that matters in this election is what happens here in the United States where we actually vote and live. And if this nation goes down, we will not be able to help anybody in the world for a very long time. In fact, we'll be seeking help from other people. We will no longer be the world leaders in democracy. Now, both France and England have risen to the occasion and the rest of the world is watching just exactly what we're gonna do in response to all of this nonsense. I watched Joe Biden in Michigan last night. I watched the crowd scream at him we have your back for kind of a long time. I want everyone to understand this. While the possibility remains very high that he may not be at the top of the ticket, there is a danger in taking Joe Biden down. There is a very big danger in taking Joe Biden down. Because all this poll paranoia and all of this he's losing support paranoia, that may be happening in the hallowed annals of his own party and the pundits and the news media, but it may not be happening with the American people. And we are the people that matter. So my message to you is this, no matter what happens here, our number one priority is making sure Donald Trump is not reelected because it will be all over here. There will not be a 2028 election. And I question whether it'll even be midterms in 2026. He will move with great speed to do what he has wanted to do now for eight years. We must not fail here. I'll talk to you guys later.